langsungan Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm hoping it turns out to be an absolutely beautiful day here in the Philippines. Uh, shows that some storms are going to be clearing out by 9 a.m. here in the next hour and a half or so. But you can see it's still really cloudy off in the distance here. It rained so much last night. Um, talking about tropical storm I just got in an argument with Melinda yeah we got in a little bit of a, a tiny tiff because I don't know I get so tired of every storm that comes through they call it typhoon every storm there's a typhoon it can just be a low pressure system forming it's a typhoon tropical storm it's a typhoon tropical depression it's a typhoon like it's not a typhoon everybody's on we have a typhoon it's not a typhoon you know and so melinda she she picked her voice up at me when i said it's not a typhoon she got mad and she went off on me how come the news says that it's a typhoon and with philippines here we call it a typhoon you may not where you're from but we call it typhoon here i said i'm going by philippine pagasa standards and, <laughs> and uh, it's just a tropical storm. And she wouldn't have it. No, it says it right here. Right here means Facebook. It says on Facebook. Let's put it clear. Everybody posting on Facebook. And, of course, news outlets posting on Facebook. She says, they're Philippines news stations, and this is what they call it. I said, Pagasa. It even made a deal yesterday. This is not a typhoon. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I'm like, man, she's just going to grandstand on me that it is a typhoon and I'm wrong and I'm just trying to go by Western ways or something. I said, no, babe. Boy, she she got really flustered. I kind of picked my voice up with her. Hey, because she's kind of getting herself out of line there over it, you know. And, uh... I take her even right to the real news right there it, had, it was perfect timing for me there's a brand new news story out and it was on choir.net and it was only six minutes old and it said Pagasa you know covering by on tropical storm I said see right there tropical storm and I'm trying to explain what their signal one means and their signal two means and signal three and signal four and it tell us to signal three it's not a typhoon and uh i told her i said you know what this is the problem around the world right now it is the problem around the world people are feeding only off of sensationalized news just like they are on COVID. this is what gwen garcia the governor of cebu was trying to explain to duterte and to the public you're not going off hard facts you're not going off true science data get the real reports you're going off general opinion and social media you know and 
Social media is out to make money. You know, they're not a government agency. They are out to make money. News outlets, media, they're out to make money. And so what makes money is drama. That's what sells. And they're selling advertisement, right? They got employees and all this stuff to pay and they're selling the ads. And it's all become such a rat race because there's so much competition. So each one wants to break the big story and all that. So they sensationalize it. And when they sensationalize it, they're basically, let's just call it what it is, they're lying. They are lying. They have taken an ounce of truth and poured a whole bunch of BS in it and stirred it up. And you can't even taste the truth in there no more. All you can taste is the BS. And so... Uh, I said they're doing the same thing with the weather. They sensationalize it to COVID-19. They're sensationalizing everything. It don't matter what it is. Every little storm, everything. Sensationalize, sensationalize. Let's call it for what it is. Lying, lying, and lying. And then when the truth comes out later, people forget the truth. They just remember the, the BS. Yeah, they can taste that a whole lot longer. Well, that is my little rant and truth this morning. Melinda backed off really quick when I showed her the truth. And um, I was really shocked because sometimes she'll hang on with that and get a little tempo for three, four, five, six hours. But no, uh, two minutes later, she done backed off. I told her, don't fall into that social media trap. Don't be one of them. And you don't be one of them either. Yeah, don't be. Wow, even Lucy got some pants in Canton too, huh? Huh? She got to join breakfast with everybody else, all the girls. It's funny, the twister mat is a tablecloth now. Hey, whatever works, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, because that's a whole lot better use for it. Trying to get everybody lined out for the morning. I was just telling Tulane to get his his cousins and all his crew that's been helping us out to uh, start sacking up stone, stacking it on this curb here. Don't stack it way down there. Then we got to tote those heavy sacks all the way up here to where we're going to mix. And I'll get them continue sacking uh, sand as well. And uh, my main concern first is get the stone bagged up because we already got more sand here back the stone. Up here on the front, they are continuing the wall now that's going to uh, make the final height of the front of the house there. Let's see if you can see, it's kind of dark here on this side of the house in the morning. You can see Joel up there at the top right now. There's a plate glass window buck there as I've told previously and there's going to be a second window buck that we pulled out at the end of the day see my finger wow 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 it's a little off huh I should get a straight finger to point with this one's crooked they're getting the steel tied here where they left off yesterday evening and on around uh, that's making the parapet wall and coming out around where the staircase will go down so they're working on that and what's happening over here just cleaning nails out right now Philippine traffic jam here. <laughs> traffic jam in the province in the province here, man. <laughs> You know it rained a lot when the ducks show up in the subdivision.
things are all locked back up here again. The resorts nearby us are all closed. Everything's just closing up. More and more restrictions, no inner island travel. Um, checkpoints, the malls are right back like a ghost town again. It's all closed doors. It's all went backwards. We thought by the time we would be leaving here, it's been so long that the world would be um, opening up, which part of it is, and we thought that here would definitely um, be moving along further than it is, but it hasn't. It's going the opposite way. Um, I just, I wish them the best. I, I wish the best here. Mel and I were actually happy to go back home to Texas right now, especially with all the new restrictions how that all around us, houses right here, people that's close to people in our crew are being quarantined in their homes. Uh, does it mean that they have the virus just because they were near somebody that had the virus? And they're giving like 20 day quarantines. And of course, we, we have a little worry with that because we have a large crew here and they're out and about, you know, and if any one of them shows up like that, we're all gonna get it. So even though there's some areas that are experiencing a little bit more freedom, it's it's not here where we're at right now because there was supposedly this spike of cases. We decided to go back there to the farm for a while, to take care of our cattle. Melinda's wanting to grow some things there as well. We're wanting to see friends. We have a Philam couple there in the United States um, up north that are wanting to fly down to Texas and spend time with us. Um, she's actually from here in Tigbawan and they've come spent time with us before last June when we um, went out on a road trip through Texas there with us. They are the couple. Uh, Melinda's sister and her boyfriend were looking very forward to seeing them and they're there in Dallas, you know, and uh, so, you know, we do have people there that we're excited to see. I got my friend Brian and his wife Pam and I got my cousin Ken and his wife Lori and uh, my Uncle Gary and Aunt Tracy. You know, you got people you love back there and you're excited to go back home and see them as well. And good old JB that I talked about um, that's up in his 90s and mid 90s. And, uh, and I'd like to get there and see him as well. So we do have some excitement of um, getting back home. Of course, we have our dog that Mike's uh, been taking care of while we've been gone. And uh, Mike would be enjoyable to see also. Uh, Patrick, uh, Monica, you know, um, there's a life back there as well. And it's, it is a challenge sometimes to live a double life, but this is a double life. You're like a double agent, you know, and uh, this is part of this channel. This is exactly what this channel is about. Balancing and living two lives in two different countries, two different cultures, and a uh, mixed culture marriage. Um, the, the experiences we go through, the challenges, the hardships, the enjoyments, all of it that we go through, you know, of, of these two different lifestyles a beach lifestyle here a farm lifestyle there um, just showing that unique situation and I appreciate you all experiencing that with us well I'm gonna get on in here and see what's happening now where'd you put the creamer at this time Melinda <laughs> where'd you put things at this time Melinda Wow, you look like you're working in food service with your hairnet on. What's up with that? <laughs> I feel like I'm in lunch line at the cafeteria. <laughs> Ma'am, can I have one more lump of potatoes, please? <laughs> uh, you're doing my request. I requested beef tapa last night to Melinda. She's always asking me. Baby, what do you want to eat tomorrow? Baby, baby, what you want? What you craving for tomorrow? And yeah, man, it hit me hard and fast. I said, Boy, I want beef tapa because we have not had that in a while, have we? Mm -hmm. It's been a while, man. and boy, Melinda didn't hesitate. It is that 
Her first words was, you know the beef here is tough. <laughs> yeah, we know it ain't that prime beef from our Texas farm, right? Oh yeah, of course. There's no prime over here. This is probably Carabao beef. <laughs> After a hard life of work. Uh -huh. I'm going to make a cup of coffee. Man, it's awesome though. You're getting it all seasoned up. Yes, and I smash for this, you know. So that oh, I. Rice that's meat. what you was out here beating on. I heard some big time beating. I said, what is that? I thought the guys were down here doing something. Tenderized things. Well, that is pretty cool, man. Mm -hmm. What's smell the good. smell? Smell good. Smell good. Try this one. <laughs> uh, what's this right here? Some corn? Yes. Um, Some steamed corn? That's the native corn you call it, right? Yes. Call it native corn, but it's not very native. Yeah, yes. It's yeah, so yeah. funny. Everything's native. It don't matter where it came from in the world. It's native. <laughs> native. See what Mel's got going here. She gave the doggy a bath, I see. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Can you smell it? Mm, smell that sweet tapa. Man, with that garlic in there, look at that. Mm. My goodness. Quit, get away from my food right there. So it's lunchtime here, midday. Man, there is all kinds of debris floating in that water out there. I'm gonna go out and get some video of it. But first, somebody just got a bath. <laughs> somebody got a bath. You don't give me baths like that. What's the deal? Huh? Huh? I might have to be an old dog so I can get a bath. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Melinda bought her some new bling bling today too. She got a new bling bling collar. <laughs> She's cool. Kids got their cots here again. They just had one. Got stuck up in a tree. They just now got it out of the tree there behind the house. Uh, that's your picture, huh? <laughs> You're gonna pogey for me, huh? Oh, there's one up there, ha! Huh? I didn't know there was one up there right now. If you all can see it or not up there. Yeah, there's one up there high. He's making that for weight on one side. All right. And there it goes. Getting higher. Oh. <laughs> they have got one tied off there on that bamboo that I've got. We've never used to put the camera up with yet. And they've got one up there. It is hundreds of feet up in the air. Just flying steady. I just don't know if you can see it. I'm having a hard time in the sun, 
to pinpoint it out on this lens because the sun's right in my face. I could try. I just don't know if you can see it or not. It is so hyper and it kind of blends with the sky. It's pretty cool. Out here on the water, huge amounts of debris floating out there. There's something huge out there in the water. Uh, there's a lot of surface debris coming up like this stuff here. I mean, just big black spots of it. And there's something huge bobbing up and down out there too. I don't know what that is. That's why you gotta be careful sometimes around these places with a boat, you can whack right into something. We've had, we've had trees. You saw the tree that we had cut up, right? That was a massive tree. And that came in off this water. And uh, they're out there. You know, ships hit them, sailboats hit them. You whack into one of those going fast with a boat, it's gonna do some damage. That's why it's important out here on these waters unlike a little lake somewhere or something you need to have a thick hull on your boat so any of you ever whacked anything like that like a log or something while you're out at sea put it down in the comments below but my years here with melinda we have watched massive trees just in my time so i can just imagine what melinda's seen massive trees and the guys would actually go out there with ropes and weigh that water why i mean big storms are churning and get a rope tied onto one of those and they would all start heaving it in because they want that wood they can sell it they can chop it up they can make things of it whoever gets the rope on it they're their claim to it you know they're the owner of it i can see uh some looks like it's either bamboo or tree limbs floating up out of the water right out there This is what will happen again. These storms come in, they bring all of that. You, you'll never beat it. It's just the ongoing forever. So you better just enjoy these things like this. Kids flying their kites. It's gonna get in that tree. Oh, he pulled it out just in time. This one boy, he kind of knows how to have fun. He's one that has the pigeons also, they call doves. Oh, it's in the Talisa. You know, my father gave me grief for uh, always being so carefree and uh and just my outlook on life you know and all that and he's just so hardcore serious you know and i've got a little bit of that in me but he really made my life miserable over it because our uh views on life were different and when he was down to his final hours there was final days he told me that he was sorry. I mean, he caused a lot of problems, a lot. It's, it's a lot of problems just to say I'm sorry for, you know? I mean, like, really, why didn't you fix these problems before you <laughs> left it? He caused a lot of problems. And he told me that he is sorry. And he told me that it was all because he was jealous of me. I, I couldn't believe it, you know, I couldn't believe it. But he, uh, he admitted that he did it all because he was jealous of my life. But I tried to always tell him, and everybody else in our family did too, to loosen up and enjoy life. He was just so hardcore serious over everything. And I want to share that lesson with you all right now. Enjoy life. In the end, he saw that I was right and he was wrong and he made my life miserable for his difference of opinion and don't you ever do that to your family either don't do it